Hey guys, Eric from HK Constrictors here again. I uh, just want to do a quick video for you guys on our uh, two gravid females. We got the, the 2014 Rio Bravo Cucalpa uh, girl that was produced by Ben Russo. Um, she's coming along nice as you'll see here in the video and then also our uh, 2013 uh, Pokegron uh, girl is gravid. And uh, she's the one that produced our litter in 2019. Uh, so super excited about that one. She has uh, she has quite a bit. Looks like she's got quite a few babies packed in her. Um, I'm guessing her due date's probably six, seven weeks from now uh, because she had a kind of a funky post ovulation shed. But we're gonna try to listen to uh, see if we can hear some heartbeats here. So uh, just wanted to show you this real quick. A little different than uh, the Peruvians and the the pokey ground that I have. This is uh, 2019. Tude Hope bloodline crossed with a Florida red tail bloodline. She was produced by Brian Abrahamson uh, in 2019. You've seen a couple of pictures of her, um, but she has a, that crazy tail. Uh, you can see the reverse stripe is what they call this. And then you can see the red. It's like a cherry red almost. Here on the sides, kind of glows. There we go. But yeah, she's pretty amazing. Uh, she's totally different uh, than most of the stuff I have, most of most of what I have looks more, um, you know, what you'd find in nature. Uh, but these are really cool reduced patterns. Um, I've got her brother, and then I have a, another fl pure Florida red tail line uh, that Brian produced in 2019 from a different litter. So raising these guys up, um, she's about a year and a half old, and she had a slow start. She actually um, she started regurgitating shortly after I got her. Um, so, got her all fixed up, and she's coming back pretty strong. She's almost as big as uh, the other 2019 female I got from Ryan that never had any regurgitation issues. So she's she's made a huge comeback, and she's pretty much where she needs to be now. She's got great muscle tone for a little girl. Um, but just thought I'd show you her real quick. She's pretty awesome. So let's take a look at the Peruvian and the, uh, the Serenium, see how they're coming along. Here's our Pucalpa uh, Peruvian girl, the Rio Bravo bloodline as well. She is day, what's today, 13th? She's day 17 uh, post ovulation shed. So I was looking each day, feels like it's taken forever, uh, but I was looking for some swelling to start, which is an indicator that she has live babies in there and not just slugs. And I've started to notice some swelling um, from just a couple of weeks ago, which is a really good sign for her, and for any boa that's grabbing. Um, but she's starting to get some more thickness right in through here. Just kind of laying on it a bit. Um, but extremely good sign. Her babies basically start right about here on this saddle and move all the way down to the end here. So I tried to see if I could hear heartbeats in her um, over this past weekend when I checked out my, my Surinam boa and didn't hear any yet, but I didn't really expect to. It's pretty early on. Usually I'll start to hear heartbeats when it's about halfway through, um, which gives me an indicator with my Pokey Ground Surinam uh, that it, it might be early April versus late May, or late April, sorry. So this girl's due date is, uh, I think it's, first week in May is when her due date is. So she's super curious all the time. She's sweet as far as Peruvians go. Peruvians kind of get a bad rap, but it's fairly accurate. Half of my Peruvians that I have are sweet and the other half want to kill me. So I've been making sure I take a little bit of extra time to handle the ones that want to kill me since they're uh, they're still small, they're not this size yet. But she's she's sweet. I mean, she's never been aggressive. <clears throat> she's food aggressive, like all of them are. Um, but she's easy to handle. Always sweet. So she likes to come out quite often and explore, just like my other big snakes do. So we'll keep updating everyone on this girl to see how she progresses. Um, 
she just has that awesome glow-in-the-dark saddles that you just don't see uh, very often in East Peruvian anymore. Um, this is kind of the, what a lot of people uh, look for and love about the Rio Bravo line. Um, this is the classic stuff that you used to see in pictures from Grass Renfro with the almost the neon yellow outline of the black saddles and the dark body. So she's like a dream snake for me that I used to see in the books and uh, honored enough to be able to get her from Vin Russo in 2014 and literally had her since she was four months old and raised her up. So it's been a long process, but um, she's an amazing boa. So hopefully get some babies from her. Here's our uh, Rio Bravo Pokegron Suriname girl. Um, she's the mom to the litter from 2019. And she is, uh, she's getting really thick. She's kind of hiding it a little bit right now. You can see how full of babies she is all the way around here. Now she had her 2019 litter and she has those awesome secondary markings that you can see here. And she gave those to pretty much all of her babies that she had uh, that sold out basically same day. Um, I kept one of her males back, is the only uh, one hold back I had, or still have. But she, uh, this is the first one that didn't have a ov like clockwork ovulation, clockwork post ovulation shed. I swear she ovulated towards the end of December, um, but didn't shed till over a month later. So I kind of have two different, uh, I guess a due date range. Um, usually I set the due date 105 days from the ovulation shed or post ovulation shed. Um, and so far the litters that I've had are anywhere from day 105 to 109. So they're pretty predictable so far from my experience. Uh, with her though, I've got her due date anywhere from the, the first week in April to the last week in April. But by the looks of her, I would say it's probably going to be closer to the first part of April. Um, she's just really swollen. Um, she's got to have a lot of babies in there. I typically feed uh, small, very small meals, at least half the size, if not even smaller than their typical meals uh, during gestation to kind of keep them from shrinking too much um, and stressing them out too much. With her though, um, not knowing her exact due date, I don't think I'm gonna give her any more food at all. Um, one thing you'll notice uh, as they get closer to giving birth, all along their neckline will start to thin out a lot. A lot of that muscle mass will start to deplete so based on my experience so far, I would say she's pretty close to six weeks out. Um, in the next couple weeks, I should start seeing some of her muscle mass deplete uh, around the first third of her body uh, that the babies are, are absorbing as they grow. Um, I heard some heartbeats over the weekend, so I'm going to grab the Doppler here in a minute and see if we can't hear some heartbeats and uh, show you what I hear. But she's just, she's an amazing animal. Um, I'm really excited to see uh, what she gives me. It's, she was paired up with the same male um, that produced the awesome uh, litter for us in 2019 with those secondary markings. And for me, that's what I love about Pokey Ground Suriname. Um, some of the variations in them. These secondary markings are really probably my most most favorite part of Pokey Grounds compared to um, all the other surnames. They just look more wild to me, which is really the look that I, that's probably my favorite of these guys. So let's, uh, let's grab the Doppler and see if we can hear something.
It's weird. I can hear the heart. I can hear the heartbeat, but it's not. Here's one. And it goes away. So there's a baby. Just have to press a little bit on her, and I don't like pressing, pressing too hard. So you can see she's got live babies in there because it's pretty swelled up and she's lumpy, so she shifted them. So there's one right there. And it starts from here and goes all the way down to her vent. You can see how calm they are. So I'll leave her alone. She's probably about six weeks to go still, or seven weeks, I'm not sure total. Hope everyone liked today's video. Uh, we got to see the Peruvian uh, girl starting a little bit of swelling. Um, it's just, it's so hard to tell compared to my surnames that I've had over the years. Um, they just get, seem to get massive uh, pretty quick with babies. So uh, definitely a new experience with the Peruvian, uh, but it's nice to see her get a little bit of swelling, uh, which tells us hopefully there's some babies in there. Um, we'll definitely check for some heartbeats here in the next few weeks, uh, which I'll post up here on the channel um, so you guys can kind of experience it along with me. It's also nice to see the, the Suriname, our little uh, Pokegron uh, girl. Um, you can see definitely heard a couple of heartbeats um, and she's she just packed. So definitely want to uh, not disturb her too much more at this point uh, because we need to make sure she carries her babies all the way uh, full term because I'm guessing there's probably at least 15 to 20 in there at this point. Um, so cross your fingers and stay tuned for more. Thanks everyone.